Okay, good compost starts a, a good compost pile. We're using this as our base ingredient for our compost tea. We're using this device, just a simple screen, since we have lots of large matter in there to screen off the fine stuff. We come over here, I've already screened out some compost material. This is our compost material. It's light, it's fluffy, much like coffee. It smells like earth, it has almost no odor, and it contains millions and millions of microbial spores, and that's the essence of compost tea. Now we start with our dry ingredients. Now I'm going to fill this pail with approximately five gallons of lukewarm dechlorinated water. This here is dried seaweed. I'm adding about, oh, I don't know, a third of a cup, maybe a little more. This here is rock phosphorus. <clears throat> All these ingredients add to the nutrient or the microbial load as it blooms. It's a source of nourishment for the bacterias and fungi that are gonna grow in the tea. It is not a source of nutrient for the plants themselves. Now we're going to go get some warm water. So what we have here is about a seven imperial gallon pail with five imperial gallons of dechlorinated lukewarm water. I'm just getting the clumps off the bottom and mixing it thoroughly. And then I'm going to add some liquid ingredient. Fish emulsion. Make sure you give it a good shake. Fish emulsion really adds more fuel, more nutrient to the microbial life in the form of protein, in the form of nitrogen, because all the nitrogens that we're adding and all the phosphorus we're adding after about 36 hours at 78 degrees, it's going to be consumed by the bacteria. And the last thing we're adding is a sugar source. which is molasses, make sure you buy unsulfated molasses because most cooking molasses that you buy in the grocery store, they use sulfur in the cooking process. You go to your health food store, you can buy unsulfated molasses. If you put sulfur in here, you're gonna encourage anaerobic bacteria and it's gonna stink like hell. And all this I'm measuring in at a rate of about a third of a cup. Don't be afraid of it, nothing in it that can hurt you. Naturally wash up when you're done. Now we're gonna take this into the house and we're gonna put an air pump on it and that's gonna bubble it violently for 24 hours, at least, as long as 36 hours, depending on the temperature. Um, the oxygen, naturally, because we're growing bacterial strains and fungal strains that require oxygen, you want to make sure there's lots of air in it. Okay, notice how now it's all mixed and it's ready to go. There's no foam or anything on the top. By the time we're ready to harvest the compost tea in approximately 36 hours, it's going to be like root beer or draft beer. It's going to be full of a foamy head. And that shows you you've got really active compost tea. I set it on another lid because it even spills over and pushes the lid up. You don't want an airtight lid, you just want to set it on there loosely. All I'm using is an aquarium air stone from a local fish store and a simple air pump. On a rigid piece of tubing, drops in there. You can build all this for next to nothing, maybe $35-$40. Plug it in, the pump starts blowing air in, which provides surplus oxygen and stirs the mixture. Okay, it's been 32 hours and the compost tea seems to be brewing. There's foam even coming out the side. Let's lift the lid and see what's happening. Oh yeah, super foamy. And that's exactly what you want to see. That's full of microbial life, and the reason why it's foamy like that is the bacteria gets sticky 
and creates a lot of surface tension and starts clumping like that. So that is a really good sign. Let's go out to the garden and mix it up and water it. Okay, we're now out here at the garden. We're going to take some compost tea in a smaller bucket. We're going to not want to stir it overly because the junk that settles to the bottom is just going to plug up the watering pail. And what I'm going to do is pour in, oh, I don't know, almost a liter of the tea into a four liter jug. And then we're going to dilute it. If with you some live water. in the city, you're going to be on city water, and that has chlorine in it. So you're going to want to dechlorinate prior to filling so you don't kill the good guy bacteria. So we've diluted it down simply because your mixture that comes out of the pail like that is a super concentrate and you can stretch it out over a farther area and still have the same positive impact. So now the pail's full of water, it has its compost tea in it. We're going to go over here and water something that's been beat up constantly by earwigs and see if we can't give it a little boost by giving it a little compost tea. Also, one thing to remember too, because you're putting living stuff on the ground, we are lucky. It rained today, so the entire garden is good and damp. If it's really dry, go through, water all the areas that are going to receive the tea, and then water with the tea. Now providing the wet soil with this compost tea is ideal simply because all those microbial life forms that we've collected in our bucket will have a chance to get into the soil and break down. I am watering everything and forming a little puddle around each plant. It isn't necessary to pour tons and tons of water from your mixture because a little bit goes a long way. 